Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for even every adversary force that come up against us. We thank you that you placed in our heart a desire to please you. And then, Lord, when folks disappoint us, teach us how to discipline ourselves that we might always represent you. We ask that you would guide us through this vein called life, that you give us a word today that would help us to learn to wait on the Lord for we know that you shall renew our strength. I ask that you forgive me of my sin, that you might use me as an instrument of your peace and a spreader of your word. We thank you for those persons who have been delivered just for today, that they have shown up in this place of worship. We thank you for the sanctuary, who symbolize a place of your peace and your presence, and your answered prayer. Use us now, each of us, to preach your word, to share your word, to witness and to evangelize, to give and to forgive. We thank you and praise you for salvation in Christ Jesus and for Christ Jesus himself. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. And all believers said, amen. 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 For those of you that have your Bible or have access to a Bible, I'm going to ask you to turn to the gospel according to Matthew, the 15th chapter. And I'll read the 21st through the 25th verses. Matthew chapter 25, beginning at verse 21, and I'll conclude at verse 25. Thank you for standing in reverence and recognition of the word of God. Read. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me, thy word for thou people. We want to tag this text a moment of suspense. A moment of suspense. Verse 23 says, and he answered her, not a word. He didn't say anything. The text teaches us, between every action and its reaction, there's always a moment of suspense. Between every aspiration and its realization, there is a moment of suspense. Between every prayer and its answer, there's always a moment of suspense. This period of suspense, whether it be short or long, is one of the most crucial periods in every action, transaction, and experience of life. A farmer plants his grain and must await the time of the harvest. A capitalist invests his money and must await the return of dividends. 
the merchant buys his merchandise, but he must await the retail sale. The physician prescribes his medicine, and he must await the curative effect upon his patient. The lawyer pleads his case, and he must await the decision of the jury. The teacher instructs his or her pupil and must await the process of learning. The preacher delivers his sermon and he must await the response of his listeners. There's always a moment of suspense. This truth of a moment of suspense is mingled with every and all of life experiences. While we're realizing one aspiration, we're hoping for another. While we're experiencing one satisfaction, we're longing for another. While we're using the wages of one day's labor, we're laboring for another day's wages. This moment of suspense is vital in the Christian experience. One of the main purpose of the story of our text concerning the contact of this woman with Jesus is to reveal the tremendous significance of the moment of suspense in the Christian life. When his mother came to Jesus on behalf of her afflicted daughter, he answered her, not a word. She met not only with silence, which is often harder to endure than open denial, but with muddled insistence of the disciples that Jesus send her away because she cries after us. Jesus' silence was the real test of her faith. It is the genuineness of our prayer, petition, plea, and plead that causes us to hold on and to hold out. Anybody ever prayed and had to wait for an answer? Sometimes you became disillusioned and doubt would try to creep in and you pray again. Uh, during that moment of suspense, you uh, have much conversation with others and some conversation with God. Uh, during that moment of suspense, maybe it's been that uh, sometime the moment of suspense have lasted all night. Uh, but somewhere between dust and dawn, you got a word from our sponsor. You got a word from the Lord that says, weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. Uh, between the waiting was the moment of uncertainty, the moment of suspense, the moment of waiting. I, I read and he said, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They should mount up with wings like eagles. There's always the moment of suspense. Well, you're saying to me that sown in that moment of suspense, God has a purpose. It's to teach us to tell our faith to our request. That's going to hit somebody on the way home. Verse 27 says, she met silence with continued pleading. She cried unto them, saying, have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. There are some very important elements in her plea, in her prayer, in her decision to come to Jesus, evidently she had heard what he had done for others. And I learned, even as a child, what he'd done for others, he'll do for me also. And then I need you to hear that she didn't say, give me something for myself, for my own self grand indictment. She said, it's my daughter, who's not even present, who I'm standing in the gap for. I left her at home with her sick self and came to you believing what you could do. Have mercy on me. And, and if you notice, she starts out calling him 
the son of David. Yeah. And she want him to know she know who he is. She know where he came from. But if you want to get something from God, you better know who Jesus is. Yeah. And she said, have mercy on me, Lord. Uh, I know you're the son of David, but I've got a relationship with you too. I know who you are. You are my curators. You are, you are Lord of all. He met her and caused her to have a moment of suspense. The disciples are still there. Even when all of the elements are in place. Somebody said, I prayed so hard. And he still didn't answer me. I've, I've asked him so many times and just look like God don't hear me. That's just your moment of suspense. He heard you, but it's some stuff he need to work on with you. Before he can give you what you asked for. And then what you asked for might not be good for you. It might not make the difference you think it's going to make. And since he knows the beginning and the end, he don't want your end to be worse than your beginning. And in the midst of all of this, here are these folks, these disciples, these followers of Christ, this crowd that helped make up the crowd says to him, send her away. Everybody that said they with you, not with you. Everybody that said they understand, don't understand. You see, you don't understand how it is to lose a child until you lost a child. You, you don't understand how it is to be motherless and fatherless until you're motherless and fatherless. Uh, you, you, some things you don't understand until you experience them. And, and, and experience work is patience. And, and that patience transmute into a patience for other folks who are going through stuff. Amen. See, some folks ain't been through nothing. They still got mama to... They call them out. They still on her checkbook. They still on her insurance. Hello, somebody. She still buy their groceries. So they don't understand what it is to fall short. To come up and you got more bills at the end of the month than you got money. But some folks are uh, had the benefits and blessings of being reared in a Christian home don't mean they know Jesus. His disciples said, send her away. Whispering, murmuring. They said she's causing a fraction. She's disturbing us. We, are, we got an empire to be on. Look at all these folks that's, follow, <coughs> that's following you. Just look, Jesus. They want to hear you. They don't want to hear about her problem. They have came to see what you had to say. And we're just glad to be with you. We'll die for you. But they didn't understand. He didn't care nothing about building no kingdom. <coughs> she was more important to him and stuff, buildings, a big name. But he met her <coughs> with silence. And she's still in her moment of suspense. But Jesus exerts his position in time as the seer for Israel. Matthew 10, Jesus charged his disciples to go only to the house of Israel and to preach, to heal, and to restore them in their relationship to God. <coughs> Jesus broke the moment of silence with a word of clarity. Verse 25, she praised him. 
She worshiped him. She prayed to him. And then she asked him for some help. Y'all know how to quiet. She worshiped. She prayed. She praised him. And then she, she asked for some help. Let me see if I can't get you some help. God know what you need. He will not give it to you unless you ask him. He know what you want. He will not give it to you unless you ask him. He hear your prayer. You can use all of the superb diction you want to. And you can congregate all the verbs you know. He will not move into action until you present your supplication. Until you ask him for what you want. You can send him to take care of everybody in Cambodia until you ask him to take care of Bebe and Lil Ray and Shanika. They're going to still struggle with their addiction. They're going to still struggle with lying. They're going to still struggle with the relationship that you have one with another until you what? After she worshiped him, after she praised him, after she prayed, she said to him, help me. And the help wasn't even for her. It was for her daughter. Then she identified what her daughter's problem was. Deliver me from folks who are trying to hide behind what the problem is. You broke. You ain't shocked, you broke. Broke got a chokehold on you. You need some M-O-N-E. Then that's what you ought to be asking for. You sick. You trying to act like it's a temporary cause. It killed a whole lot of folks. You need to be asking for healing. Don't be talking about somebody else need help. You need some help. She asked him for help. Now, it's a difference between being fancy and foolish and asking for help. Difference between begging and asking for help. Look like somebody right in here ought to say amen. amen. Can I help somebody? Because sometimes we think God's so into us that he's concerned about our vocabulary and our, the position that we're in when we pray like Pharisees. We want to stand and beat on our chest and we want to get down on our knees and all that kind of stuff. Uh, he just wants you to ask him. I, I told you about the lady who was drowning, right? She's very sophisticated. She's very intelligent. She was well to do and affluent, articulate. But she was drowning. And, and, and you know it's about the third time that you come up that you don't come up no more, right? So the first time she came up, lifeguard looking and seeing him, and she's been backstroking and swimming, and, and she comes up and she says, assistance. <laughs> and he waved back at her. <laughs> she go back down. She's still struggling to catch her breath and to keep him drowning. And she's taking on some more water. She comes back up. Uh, Margaret, she says, assistance. <laughs> this time she got both hands up and he's done, oh, she's just having a good time. She go down for the third time and she come back up and by this time the white of her eyes are showing and her, her lungs are about full of water and she comes up and she has one word left in her vocabulary. She comes up and she says, help! <laughs> Lifeguard dove in and 
took her and took her to the side of the pool and pumped her lungs so that she could expel the water and, and looked at her and her color came back and, and she realized that uh, she might have wanted some assistance, but she needed You better ask him for what you need. In your moment of suspense, don't go away. Stand there. Even if you hear folk talking about you, stand there. Even if it look like folks who ought to be helping you, not helping you. Stand there anyway. Don't, don't, don't run away. Don't run from it. Stay in the presence of God. And be assured that he's on your side. That he, he hear you and that he, 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 he got you. You need to understand. Jesus looked at this woman and he needed to test her faith. And it's our faith that gets us connected to God. And, 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 and Jesus deferred uh, in his clarity to her. He deferred and he said, it's not meant to give uh, the children bread to, to cast it to dogs. And, and, and she caught it. She understood what he was saying. And she said, listen, but the dogs eat the crumbs that falls from the master's table. Now, see, to, to, to you, that may not mean as much as it meant to her. Because he was talking about those little cute chihuahuas that you keep in the house. She was talking about those domesticated dogs that, that hung around and ate from the table. And, and, and in that day, because they didn't have the kind of sanitary benefits that they were, they had, we have, they baked fresh bread and sit all around the table and when a fellow and they ate with their hands. And so when he finished eating turnip greens with ham hocks, y'all didn't hear me, uh, some red peppers out of the garden that his slave made. And he uh, crumbled it up. Don't look at me like you eat your greens with no fault, Rich. <laughs> How you eat your greens? And, 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 and they eat it. And then he wanted to get some roast. So he didn't want the roast and the greens to be mixed up on his hand, which was his fork. So he pulled a piece of that bread and he wiped his hands. And then because he had savor, he threw the bread on the floor. And those were the crumbs that fell from his table. But let me teach you something. Everything that was on his plate was in that crumb. Whatever he was eating, when he wiped his hands, the dog was eating. Y'all done heard stories. I know, know y'all been that poor to where you took the sin or something. The, 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 the grease. It made gravy. Say the bacon grease on a little pot on the stove. And when you didn't have no meat, you took the And when you got home from school, it smelled like something was cooking. But it was the same old thing. So this Syrophoenician woman understood that. She was saying, I ain't always had no meat. I ain't always had the finest of things. But what I got is a sick daughter. And I'm going to tell you, she said, I'm going to tell you what his problem is. His problem is the same problem you got, Jesus. The devil messing with her. She's afflicted by the 
devil. She got a grievous spirit of the devil. Now, if you want somebody to help you, find a common call. Amen. That's, that's why we ought to go vote. We got a common cause. We got somebody that don't care what color you are, how much you got, he don't care nothing about nobody. He don't care whether you're Democratic or Republican. He'll talk about your mama, your children. We got a common cause. We got a reason. To go vote, to qualify to vote, to make sure we get there to vote, because we got to come the devil. Yeah. And in, in, in substance, uh, Sister Winston, he was saying to Jesus, the same spirit that giving you trouble, giving my daughter trouble. The same problem you got with these disciples murmuring behind your back and not understanding your position and your power, the same problem you got, I got. But I believe you got the power to help me with my problem. And if you help me with my problem, I'll help you with your problem. So he makes us aware that if we just stand there, if we hold out, that there's a crumb of divine blessing that's available to us. There's a crumb always falling from the master's table. No one needs to go away hungry. Jesus is the supplier of every soul. The word said, I read that, but he shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. If you're lost, he's our savior. If you're weak, he's our strength. If you're thirsty, he's living water in dry places. If you're sick, he's the great physician. If there are dark house gathering, he's the master of the storm. If your ship is tossed to and fro, he's the captain of the ship and the anchor of our soul. In our moment of suspense, don't go away. Don't give up. God is working it out. In your moment of suspense, pray, petition, praise, worship, hold on, hold out, stand there, and just wait until your change comes. Her faith Gave her the victory. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Even though he blessed her. Even though he assured her. She had to have enough faith when she got back home. That everything was all right. No doubt she did like any good parent when she left. She left that girl in a fit. She left that girl being tormented by the devil. She left her in the situation she found herself always in, and she said to her with tears in her eye, when I get back. When, when, uh, I'm going to see Jesus, and, and I heard he was in Sidham, and I'm, when I see him and, and talk to him, everything is going to be. But you got to hold out. Y'all don't believe me? Every situation, every time Jesus sustained somebody, they had that moment of suspense. Y'all remember the lady caught in the act of adultery? She had a moment of suspense. She had no way of knowing what Jesus was going to do. She couldn't tell what he was going to write. And, and, and I really don't know what he wrote on the ground. And I don't have enough time to use my sanctified imagination. But in judgment for about 30 seconds, I believe he wrote, if you confess your sins. He's faithful and just to forgive your sins 
and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. I believe that he looked down and, and all she did, if you read the text, all she did was just, mm -hmm. just stand there. Yeah. She, st she stood there while her accusers were accusing her. Yeah. She stood there while they told the story, how they caught her. She stood there while in their righteous indignation, they brought him to her for him to condemn her and, and he just made her wait. Can't nobody tell me what he wrote. But I believe he might have said, he does without sin. Cast the first stone. All she did then was just stand there. And when her moment was over, he says to her, Red, go and sin no more. Your moment is over. Whatever they were looking for, they gone. But you waited until your change came. You waited until your answer came. You waited until forgiveness was wrought on, on your behalf. Every situation that you encounter in your life, you're going to have, you're going to have, you're going to have, Sister Pullum, a moment of suspense. Y'all remember Lazarus, right? Word came to him. His friend was sick. Uh -huh. Well, they believe it was a sickness under the death. Jesus kept on picking feet, <laughs> <laughs> walking around talking to folk. Uh -huh. and, and I imagine the message saying, "You don't understand. You need to hurry up and get to Bethany. Lazarus is sick, and he he gonna die." He kept on doing whatever, polishing his sandals. <laughs> what he was doing, y'all tell me what he was doing. <laughs> kept on, and he kept on doing that for two days. Yeah. And then there were two more days journey to Lazarus' house. He'd been dead four days by the time he got there. And that whole time, Martha and Mary had been in suspense. <laughs> Wonder when Jesus going to get here. I thought they were buddies. Yeah. That way folks do you when you're down. <laughs> you know how we go to syndicate. <laughs> Show up. And, and, and I'm telling you, this, when he showed up, Henley, they were mad with Jesus. They got in his face. Told him, if you've been here, my brother wouldn't have died. You don't want to hear that text. Show me. Show me where laid him. If you think they've been waiting, how you think Lazarus' journey been waiting in that cold too? <laughs> if you think the folks who doing all that talking was having a problem, what you think Lazarus was thinking? Died waiting on Jesus to come. <laughs> See, sometimes Jesus tell I don't want to hear all that yada yada. Sometimes when we're talking to him, all that stuff we're talking about, he said, well, I want to know where were you when I was in prison? Yeah. Did you visit the sick? Yeah. Take care of the widows and orphans? Yeah. I want to know what you've been doing. Don't be telling me about all your sins and all that. You should have confessed that when you did it. Yeah. Yeah. The moment of suspense was over. Said Lazarus, come forth. Yeah. Anybody here ever had to wait on God? Yeah. Yeah. Old folks say he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. All I'm saying is that every one of us. Even in our desire to please God and to be pleased by God, got to wait in the fullness of time. God has a chronos moment and God has a kairos moment. Chronos is chronological. Kairos is in the fullness of time. 
when God get ready, when the human line and the divine line cross, and God steps out of nowhere and began to orchestrate circumstances. See, that happened. That happened one Sunday. It happened when the, the, hum, the horizontal line of humanity intersected with the divine line of divinity and a Kairos moment was created. It happened when Jesus was born and in the fullness of time is what the, the Bible called it, when God get ready. Not when Charles Winston get ready, when God get ready. Thunder and lightning happen when God get ready. Storm ceases when God. If you ain't never had a Kairos moment, then you keep on living in the Kronos. You keep on having birthdays and you keep on getting up in the morning. And one day he's going to come see about you. One day he's going to answer your prayer and you're going to know that nobody do it but God. If Jesus had his moment of suspense, and I'm trying to close my Easter speech. If Jesus had his moment of suspense, don't you know you and I are going to have ours? Wonder what he was thinking. Fifteen followers from Bethany to Jerusalem. Got up that morning and knew that it was Passover time. Knew that there was a whole lot of folks in town, a whole lot of stuff going on, and he knew that he was facing his setting sun. He began his journey. They met him. Threw palm branches in front of him. Hollered, Hosanna, Hosanna. Son of David. They praised him and approved him. That same crowd was at the crucifixion. Yeah. saying crucify him yeah. crucify him yeah. give us baratas and crucify Jesus yeah. everybody start with you yeah. ain't gonna end up with you everybody that said they for you yeah. not with you yeah. not for you they for you for what they could get yeah. they for you for what you given they for you for where they think you're going. Yeah. And they want you to remember them when you get there. Yeah. He had his moment of suspense. Oh, yeah. And the world was waiting. Yeah. On Thursday, yeah. they unjustly tried him. Yeah. Lied on him. Yeah. Anybody have to <laughs> wait for Jesus to clean up their reputation? They spit on him. Gambled for his clothes. Pressed the crown of thorns on his head until blood came out. Strickland and he opened not his mouth. He didn't say a mumbling word. Moment of suspense. They buried him in a barry tomb. Just needed it for the weekend. Sunday morning. The moment of suspense was over. Sunday morning was getting up time. Sunday morning was fateful time. Sunday morning was a powerful time. Sunday morning, no more waiting. They came to the sepulchers looking for him, and the angel said, Why are you looking for the dead among the living? Why come you here looking for him? He has risen. Like he said, you don't have to wonder about it no more. I've come by to testify he's alive. Yeah. He lives. Yeah. I know he lives. Yeah. Every now and then, I feel something on the inside. Yeah. Every once in a while, joy bells turn over on the inside. Yeah. He's alive, I tell you. Yeah. And because he lives, yeah. I can face tomorrow. Yeah. Because he lives, yeah. my living is not in vain. My moment of suspense is over. My Christ is alive. He sits on the right hand of the Father, making intercession for him. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? He might make you wait for a little while. If you're going to have a baby, you got to wait most of the time nine months. 
But all the waiting is over when you hear one little baby crying and they say it's your baby. Every time a sinner repents, the moment of suspense is over. He did for them what he did for you. The moment of suspense can be over for you right now. You can come just as you are, weary, wounded, and sad, and you're finding him a resting place. And he'll make you glad. The moment of suppress, suspense can be over. The doors of the church open. This is the invitation to discipleship. Your moment can be gone. You can have the best of assurance that Jesus is yours and that you belong to him. The doors of the church open. And the Bible says, whosoever will, let them come. That one here that will trust him today. You can come as a candidate for baptism. You can come on your Christian experience. You can come to rededicate your life.